fan burst into hysterics. You're so funny. This is why you are my idol. I love you so much. Do I know beautiful sky? That's brilliant. Nor didn't know what to say. That title song she had written when she was 19 years old at university in Bristol had changed the life of a person in Brazil. This was overwhelming. This clearly was the life she was destined for. She doubted that she would ever have to go back to the library. She could cope with being adored. This was better than being in Belford, sitting on the number 77 bus, humming sad tunes to the window. She posed for selfies. One young woman looked close to tears. She had a large photo of Nora kissing Ryan Belly. I was so sad when you broke up with him. I know, yeah, it was sad, but you know things happen. It's a learning curve. Jona appeared at her arm and gently guided her away towards the hotel. When she graced the elegant, jasmine-scented lobby, marble chandeliers, floral displays, she saw that the rest of the band were already in the bar. But where was her brother? Maybe he's been smoothing the breast somewhere else. As she started to move towards the bar, she realized that everyone, concert, receptionist, guest, was looking at her. Nora was about to finally seize the opportunity to ask about her brother's whereabouts when Jordan beckoned over a man who was wearing a t-shirt with the labyrinths sprinted on it in a retro sci-fi movie font. The guy was probably in his 40s with a graying beard and tightening and thinning hair, but he seemed intimidated by Nora's presence. He did a tiny bow when he shook Nora's hand. I'm Marcelo, he said. Thanks for agreeing to the interview. Nora noticed another man behind Marcelo, younger, with piercings, tattoos, and a big smile, holding recording equipment. We reserved a quiet space in the bar, Jonas said, but there's people. I think we had better do this in Nora's wit. Great, said Marcelo. Great, great. As they walked over to the lift, Nora glanced back at the bar and saw the other band members. You know, Maybe you'd like to speak to others too, she said to Marcelo. They're remembering things I don't, a lot of things. Marcelo smiled and shook his head and delicately said it works better this way, I feel. Oh, okay, she said. Every eye was on them as they waited for the lift to arrive. Jonah leaned into Nora. Are you okay? Of course, yeah. Why? I don't know, I just... You seem different tonight. Different how? Just different. As they got in the lift, Joanna asked another woman, one Nora recognized from the coach, to bring some drinks from the bar, two beers for the podcasters, a sparkling mineral water for Nora, and a capirina for herself and bring them up to the sweet mayor. Maybe I'm too tall in this life, thought Nora. She walked out of the lift and along the plush, salmon pink carpet to her suite. 
And then, as she entered it, she tried to act like this was all perfectly normal. This gigantic room, leading to another gigantic room, leading to a gigantic bedroom. There was a vast bouquet of flowers for her, with a note signed by the hotel's manager. While we, she resisted saying, she gazed around at the lavish furnishings, the sweeping floor to ceiling curtains, the pristine white bed, the size of an acre, the TV the size of a small cinema, the champagne on ice, the silver straight full of Brazilian honey case, and the card informed them. Don't suppose you'll be having any of these, said Joanna, taking one of the little delicacy from the tray. Now you are on that new plan. Hardly said, Hardly said I had to keep an eye on you. Nora watched Joanna bite into one of the cakes and wondered how good any plan could be if it didn't involve eating something so clearly delicious. It's a Brazilian honey cake. She had no idea who Holly was, but she knew she didn't like them. Also, just so you know, the fires are still going on in LA and there are evacuating half of Kalaspas us now. But hopefully it won't get as high as your place. Nora didn't know whether to please to be pleased at the idea of having a house in LA or worried that it was about to go on fire. The two Brazilian podcast guys took a few moments to set up their equipment Nora sunk herself into the vast sofa in the living area as Jonna, attending to a few growth crumbs around her mouth with her heavily manicured finger, explained that their music podcast, Awesome, was the most popular in Brazil. Great demographics, Jonna enthused, and the numbers are stratospheric. It's totally worth doing. And she stayed there, watching like a hot mother as the podcast began. The podcast of revelation, revelations. So it has been a crazy year for you, Marcelo began. It's very good English. Oh yeah, it's just been quite alright, said Nora. Trying to sound like a rock star. Now, if I may ask about the album, Posterville, you wrote all the lyrics, yes? Mostly yes, Nora guessed. Staring at the mole, staring at the small, familiar mold on her left hand. She wrote all of them in the jetted journal. Marcelo nodded while the other guy, still smiling toothly, Fiddled about with sound levels via laptop. I think Feathers is my favorite track, said Marcelo as the train arrive. arrived. I'm glad you like it. Nora tried to think of a way she could get out of this interview. A headache, a bad stomach. But the one I'd like to talk about first is the first one you decided to release. Stay, stay out of my life. It seems such a personal statement. Nora forced a smile. The lyrics say it's all really. Obviously, there has been some speculation about whether it refers to the how do you say it in English. Restraining order of a Joanna Halfley. Yes, the restraining order. Mm, said Nora, taken aback. Well, I prefer to get it all out in the song. I find that stuff difficult to talk about. 